Hi, this is Stephen from Owned at Disso. Today, I'm going to compare the gaming performance of the MSI Alpha 15 with the AMD Ryzen 3758 CPU and the 7nm Navi RX 5500M graphics card. I'm going to compare it to the Acer Nitro 5 17 inch with the Intel i5 9300H and GTX 1650. Now, both systems have 16 gigabytes of RAM running dual channel. And both CPUs are 4 core 8 thread with similar clock speeds. On paper, the Alpha 15 should easily beat the Nitro 5. It commands about a 15% price premium, so we, we want to see at least that gain in performance. I also throw in the performance numbers I had from my Asus Zephyrus G with the same 3750H but with a GTX 1660 Ti Max Q graphics. Now, the drivers I used on the Zephyrus G were older, so use those results for reference only. The drivers used on the Alpha 15 were Adrenaline 19.30.01.48 and for the Nitro 5 I used 441.12. Note AMD did push newer drivers to me but they were not compatible with the Alpha 15. So without further ado let's take a look. First up we have Battlefield 5 using DX11. In this sequence I show high settings, but I also tested all quality settings during a 64 player game using the Rotterdam map. I used fraps to measure the frame rate across the whole campaign and averaged it out. Since Battlefield 5 is one of the most punishing games, I use this to measure the thermals and power usage on the Alpha 15. The 3750H uses 30 watts on average and peaked at 48 watts with thermals averaging 74 degrees Celsius with a peak of 93. The RX 5500M remains very cool, as you can see, at 55 degrees. But you will notice that it doesn't boost very high. It actually struggles to get over 1000 MHz, which is a far cry from its 1645 MHz spec. There is no such issues with the GTX 1650 in the Nitro 5. The CPU and GPU are boosting well here. You will notice that the GPU utilization on the Alpha 15 is much less, suggesting that either the 3758 CPU is struggling to feed the graphics card or the drivers are not yet optimized for it. Looking at the frame rate chart, we have the Zephyrus G in grey, the Nitro 5 in orange and the Alpha 15 in blue. Now without a doubt, the RX 5500M struggles here. We don't see much performance gain by lowering quality settings. Now since the 3750H is also used in the Zephyrus G and that beats out the Alpha 15 by 31%, I'm inclined to think that AMD has some work to do on the drivers here. Now, now on to the new Call of Duty Warfare using 1080p. This game was a nightmare to play on the Alpha 15 at high settings. Not only was I getting serious graphical artifacts, but it would pause for a second or two very often. In fact, it was totally unplayable. So I tested this game at low settings. I was still getting crazy colored patterns all over the place, but at least now it was playable. Not enjoyable, but playable. The RX 5500M was boosting up nicely now, and as you can see, it was pulling about 60 watts. Temperatures were still good though, in the low 60s. The 3750H was also boosting nicely, and the GPU utilization is much better too. In terms of frame rate, there really isn't that much to choose between the GTX 1650 and the RX 5500M here. And indeed, both were close to the 90 FPS mark. Now this was a multiplayer game on one of the big maps, so I expect to be better it to be better in the campaign or a smaller map. Overwatch 1080p epic settings. Again using traps to measure frame rate on some multiplayer maps. The Alpha 15 handled this game very well, the RX 5500M boosting above 1600 MHz and pulling about 74 watts. The 3750H holding a nice 3800 MHz boost clock. At epic settings, the RX 5500M certainly has an advantage over the GTX 1650. Let's see how it compares when we reduce quality settings and put more onus on the CPU. So the Alpha 15 is in blue and Nitro 5 in orange. At Epic, the AMD card enjoys a 28% gain, but notice this gets completely reversed as we lower quality settings. Now, averaging it out gives about the same performance. The 3750H definitely holds this back if you're looking to max out the frame rate. You can see the same with the Zephyrus G in grey. Performance hardly changes at all as you lower quality settings. 
I'm getting a feeling that lower settings isn't really the strength of the 3750H CPU. In Rainbow Six Siege, I use the inbuilt benchmark across all quality settings. This footage is using the Ultra Quality preset. The Alpha 15 definitely has a leg up on the GTX 1650 here. At Ultra settings, we see that at 152 FPS, it has a 13% gain over the GTX 1650, which scored 134. The RX 5500M also beat out the GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q by 9%. Again, as we go to medium settings or lower, the Nitro 5 closes the gap to give an average gain of 10% over the GTX 1650. I believe the 1660 Ti Max-Q in the Zephyrs G was being held back by the 3750H. In Far Cry 5, 1080p, I again use the inbuilt benchmarking tool and this footage is using ultra settings. The Alpha 15 holds a slight performance advantage here. The clock rate of the RX 5500M jumps around a lot, from you know as low as 600 MHz up to 1600 MHz, whilst you don't see such fluctuations with the GTX 1650. Again, we have the Alpha 15 in blue and the Nitro 5 in orange, with the Zephyrs G in grey. The RX 5500M holds a 9% advantage over the 1650 at Ultra, but they become the same at low settings. The GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q and the Zephyrs G is about the same. To put it into perspective, a 9750H GTX 1660 Ti laptop gets around 80 FPS at Ultra, so that is some 30% ahead of the 1660 Ti Max-Q. That is a big difference, so I believe the 3750H is holding both systems back. Now onto Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p. This footage is using high settings. This game has a built-in benchmark tool and it is very buggy. By default, it uses the Vulkan API, which does favor AMD over Nvidia. So I wanted to test DX12, but after changing the setting, the game would not load up thereafter. You have to go into the system settings and manually change the text file back to Vulkan. So yeah, this game is going to run better on the Alpha 15 versus the Nitro 5. The RX 5500M boosts up nicely and remains very cool, as does the 3750H. The minimum frame rate reports are still low though. The Alpha 15 sees some nice performance gains even at low quality settings and on average beats the Nitro 5 by 37%. Now finally we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p DX12 using the inbuilt benchmark. The RX 5500M and 3750H again boost up nicely with very good GPU utilization. This is at higher settings and it performs close to the GTX 1650. Now as your lower quality settings, the Alpha 15 maintains its advantage over the Nitro 5 to a tune of 10%. The Zephyrs G and its 1660 Ti Max-Q enjoy a nice lead at Ultra, but the 3750H definitely isn't well suited for it when you do lower the settings. I believe this is the general performance advantage the RX 5500M has over the GTX 1650, you know, 10%. Sure, if we add in the Vulkan API performance, the, the difference it swings it to about 20%, but I don't believe that is a true indication of average game performance. I do believe the Alpha 15 needs to come down in price by, you know, at least $100. I would like to see it priced below $1,000 if possible. Like it's a thank you for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.